The winter break is finally over and we have seen all of the 2024 F1 cars and the 2024 F1 season is just about to get underway and it is officially testing week and the teams will be heading to Bahrain for the one and only pre-season test. And so that means in today's video, I am going to be giving out my F1 2024 pre-season test preview and predictions. This is a series where I'll be previewing and then at the end of the video I'll be giving out my predictions for what I think will happen in pre-season testing. If you enjoy the video then please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now let's get straight into the video. As I said it is officially testing week and we are going to be seeing all of the brand new F1 cars out on track in anger as the teams will be looking to learn as much as they possibly can about their brand new cars before the season gets underway. Pre-season testing is one of the most important times of the years for the teams as this is where they will learn if they are either in for a good or a not so good season. Overall fastest lap times are not the most important thing during testing. Instead the teams will be looking to get as much mileage as they possibly can so they can try to iron out any issues with their cars. Remember, the first race is just a week after this test, so any issues in testing will need to be quickly resolved so they don't have any unwanted issues when it comes to the first Grand Prix of the season. Similar to last year, testing consists of one three-day test at the Sakia circuit, meaning that they don't have too much time to be able to get used to the cars, unlike in previous years where they would do two or maybe even three three-day tests. With this being the third year of the current rule set, the teams will likely have gotten on top of any reliability woes and all running should be fairly smooth, but you can never be too sure when it comes to testing. As I said, the preseason test takes place at the Sakia circuit in Bahrain, which is also where the season will be starting the following week. For the teams, this is great because not only can they dial their cars in, they can also get an eye in for what to expect when it comes to the Grand Prix. Bahrain is one of the best places on the calendar for them to go testing. They used to go to Barcelona and Jerez in Spain. However, the weather conditions would typically mean that all running was not really relevant. Bahrain, however, will have nice warm temperatures, which is more in line with the races during the season. Not only is the weather favourable, but also the circuit is a great layout for testing. The circuit will challenge the cars in a number of different ways. The circuit will test their straight line speed performance, their ability on their brakes, their mechanical grip in slow speed corners, and also the stability of the car at high speed. Turn 1, Turn 8, and Turn 14 will all test the car's ability to stop in heavy braking zones. Turn 9 and Turn 10 will test the car's stability as the corner is a very tricky braking zone where they will be both cornering and braking heavily. Finally, Turns 5, 6, and 7, and Turn 12 test the car's ability to change direction at medium to high speed corners, which will test their downforce levels. And finally, the first couple of corners test the car's ability in slow speed corners and the mechanical grip of the car. All of these together makes Bahrain a great place to test. Bahrain is also tough on tyres in general and so for teams kind of like Haas and Ferrari, they will be trying to find out if they have finally improved their tyre wear in some capacity so they can compete a little bit more when it comes to race trim. As I mentioned, mileage is more important when it comes to the pre-season testing and the team that managed the most amount of mileage last season was, funnily enough, the worst team when it came to the start of the year, which was Alpha Tauri, as they managed to rack up a pretty incredible 456 laps, showing just how good the Honda power unit is. The fastest time from last year's pre-season test was a 130.305 set by Sergio Perez in the Red Bull on the final day of testing. The third fastest time from pre-season testing was set by Valtteri Bottas in the Alfa Romeo, kind of showing that times in testing don't really mean a great deal of anything. As it is a test, Pirelli will be bringing all of the tyres in the Pirelli range. We will not see the C4 or C5 in Bahrain for the Grand Prix, but the teams do need to see how the tyres will work on their cars. I anticipate that we will see mostly the C2 and C3 tyres being used, with C1 probably being used a lot in the morning sessions, especially in the first two days. The C4 and C5 tyres will probably come out when the teams want to try some faster lap times towards the end of the test. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video, then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. 
I'm on my way to 5k subs, and I would really appreciate it if you helped me get there. Now though, let's get back to the video, and let's talk about the top 5 teams, starting with Aston Martin. For Aston Martin, they ended the 2023 season in a very different way to how they started it. At the beginning of last year, they were the team that had set themselves up to fight Red Bull. But by the end, instead of fighting Red Bull, they found themselves fighting Alpha Tauri. When they launched their new 2024 car, it was clear that they have set lofty targets and are determined to get themselves back in the fight at the sharp end of the grid. They've changed their front and rear suspensions to try and control the anti-dive and anti-squat. The rear suspension has been changed from a pull rod to a push rod solution. This should help them run the car lower to the ground and help them maximise their aerodynamics when running lower to that ground, without suffering from porpoising. Red Bull have already mastered this and the other teams are trying desperately to catch up. They've also updated their front nose in order to try and increase the amount of airflow going under the car to be worked by the floor. There has been some major changes and Aston Martin will definitely have a steep learning curve so for them it will be all about getting laps on the board and learning as much as they possibly can with these new configurations. Fernando Alonso will be wanting to get back to winning ways and at the very least be back to a consistent podium contender. For his teammate Lance Stroll, this is now his 8th season in the sport, and for me he really needs to try and just get closer to Alonso in terms of pace and consistency, so that he can potentially be in a position to help Alonso and the team maximise their finishing position. For McLaren, they are the complete opposite of Aston Martin when it comes to how their 2023 season went. They started off terribly and fighting Alpha Tauri, but by the end they instead seem like the team most likely to fight Red Bull on a consistent basis. Going into 2024, the main areas where they need to improve is really in the slow speed sections. They were typically weak in this area, but instead they had incredible downforce when it came to high speed corners. Because of this, McLaren were typically strong at circuits like Suzuka and Interlagos. However, they were weaker when it came to circuits like Las Vegas, as they were slow in slow speed corners and also they weren't great in a straight line. The Bahrain test will highlight if they've improved in a straight line and also highlight if they've improved in the slow speed sections, especially when it comes to the first couple of corners. Lando Norris and Oscar Piastri are looking for their first Grand Prix wins and if they have improved in slow speed corners and also in a straight line, then we could very well see one of those two win their first race this year. But I don't expect that Bahrain will be their best circuit, and to some extent I don't think Saudi Arabia will be their best circuit either. For Ferrari, they are going in a different direction to a lot of their competitors. The vast majority have now changed their rear suspension to be a pushrod suspension to try and increase the performance of the ground effect cars. Ferrari on the other hand have decided to stick with a pull rod rear suspension and instead have focused on aerodynamic improvements and also characteristics of the car to make it better when it comes to race pace. In this pre-season test, Ferrari are likely going to have a major focus on race pace in order to see if they have improved on their biggest weaknesses from last year, which was race pace and tyre wear. Charles Leclerc scored a number of pole positions, but he was unable to convert any of those poles to wins due to the Ferrari not being strong enough when it came to race pace of the car. They typically were too hard on the tyres to fight Red Bull, and so in this test we are going to see if they have fixed that in any way, shape or form. Also, we will see if they were right to stick with a different suspension layout, especially as Bahrain can be one of the bounciest circuits on the calendar. For Mercedes, they are entering 2024 with a completely different car to what they had in 2023. For 2023, Mercedes decided to stick with the zero side pod concept at the beginning of this season, and this concept essentially left them in a compromised position in terms of what they could do. When they introduced side pods, it was really a design that was halfway to what they actually wanted. Mercedes have changed their rear suspension to be more in line with what Red Bull are running. Because they have made some huge changes similar to Aston Martin, they're going to need to get laps under their belt to understand these major changes and how they will work. They've also got a very interesting front wing design. It's hard to say right now whether the front wing will be deemed legal. I think it will be, but I can see some teams potentially complaining, as it looks like they're trying to reintroduce the Y250 Vortexes, which were last seen during the last set of rules. Lewis Hamilton is looking to try and win his first Grand Prix in this brand new era. However, with him already having one foot out the door, it doesn't fill me with great confidence that the car is going to be anything too special. 
We shall see though when testing commences, but I have to say, I do think they could win a few races still. They've got an interesting front wing, and I do think that other teams will be looking to try and copy that front wing design that Mercedes has opted for. Finally, for Red Bull, it looks like their evolutionary car could be one of the most revolutionary cars on the grid. They have opted to make a number of large changes, despite Adrian Newey saying it was going to be one of more of an evolutionary step forwards. For Max Verstappen and Red Bull, they will be looking to just get the mileage in and see what they have under their belt and see if they still have a decent edge over the competition. I don't really expect to see them do too much with fast laps because they are more focused on the long runs. They need to focus on getting consistently fast laps and build on what was already a dominant car when it came to race pace. So with that in mind then, what are my predictions for the preseason test? Well, my first prediction is that we will see every single team do more laps this year than they had managed in 2023, as they will have all gotten a much better understanding and reliability should just be getting better and better and better. My second prediction is that the fastest lap from the test will come from Ferrari, as I expect that the Marinello team will want to come out punching, and because of that, we will see them set the fastest lap in the test. My third prediction is that Ferrari will also have the most mileage of any team in this test, as I said, they want to get as many laps under their belt, and I can see them trying to get the most amount of mileage to see if they've got on top of any tyre wear woes that they had from last year. VCarb will be the team that shocks everyone in my opinion for how well they perform. I have a feeling they could be taking the fight to Aston Martin this year. And my fifth and final prediction is that Red Bull will have the most impressive overall pace out of all of the teams. But is that really going to be a surprise? Well, I'm not too sure about that. But those are my thoughts. The question is, what do you think will happen in the preseason test? Who do you think will be fast? Who do you think will be slow? And who do you think is going to impress overall? In the comment section down below, let me know. And as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.